What's going on, good people? Rich here. School in the building. What's happening, man? Hey, it's your girl, Ray P, back on the mic. What's going on, y'all? Slow motion, slow motion, man. Back at it again with another episode of the Culture Garden Podcast. Yes. You know, the trio's back in full effect. We, we might. appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, before we get into today's episode and all the ple- all the um, other stuff, Ray P. Yo. How was the birthday? It Dark was and a- lovely. Yeah. Dark- you see me looking like a brown beauty. I got to go get my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> like I gotta get my makeup matched because it's a little questionable. So hey man, uh, Jet Magazine, page 76, <laughs> Pisces. You feel me? Beauty of the week. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> As always. <yeah. laughs> hey, shout out to you, man. Glad you had a great birthday. Thank you. you know, right. People's out the country you. getting her tan together. Yes, yes. Period. That's how I do. Absolutely. So if you haven't already, I know a lot of people uh uh commented on the IG but make sure you just hit her up show her some of that show her some of that belated birthday love yes, yes thank y'all um, so much I tried to respond to people who did on the page um so I'll go back and check it but thank y'all absolutely absolutely well deserved well deserved man not deserve obviously it's your birthday but yeah. like you 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 deserve that love absolutely <laughs> I'm glad that you received it I hope you got all your flowers that's the whole purpose of what we do mm-hmm. so we got to take care of each other first Mm -hmm. um but as always we appreciate y'all for tuning in thank you for another week we've been going at this pretty consistently now for some months every week we're giving you content um as well as we got y'all the television feed we are currently talking about showtime's your honor um that's been a lot of fun we have two episodes left we just wrapped up harlem season two so that's still on the feed Uh, i believe that once your honor is over we're probably gonna have a small gap between before we do our next show um, but we're going to throw on the um, school and myself did a Martin best episode ever series. So I'm, I'm going to upload those episodes to the, we got y'all feed. So that All way right. people can get those as well. I'm yeah. right. Um, Please remember to like subscribe, rate review, share it, everything. We, we, you know, we appreciate y'all so much for just continuing to give us a platform to talk. And if you follow us or if you don't follow us, please do the culture garden podcast on Instagram. Our link tree is in our bio. You have access to all of our feeds, the YouTube page, everything. So there's no reason why you can't find us and enjoy the content that we're putting out. Um, Other than that, Creed 3 just came out. We did our Creed episode last week, just following up on that. I know me and school saw Creed 3. Ray, you haven't seen it yet, though, right? I haven't seen it. Yeah, okay. We won't give any spoilers, but it was a a good movie. Good movie. It was a good movie. And as I told Rachel on, and me and school discussed this off mic, but I told you, I don't know if we were actually recording or if it was before recording, Rachel, but Jonathan Majors did not blow him out the water like nah. you predicted. <laughs> and I, like, I, I think I told you, that's saying something because Jonathan Majors did his thing. Yep. Yeah. Did okay. his thing. But Michael B., man, shout out to him because he definitely stepped up to the plate. Absolutely. Good job. Good for him. I was mm. very, very impressed. Yeah. So we we kicked off the month with creed as we just mentioned because creed 3 just released but the rest of this month we're going to do what we call request month um as we always say at the beginning of each episode we really do appreciate y'all and we can't do anything i mean we can do it but it wouldn't be as fun if it was just the three of us just talking movies Mm -hmm. Um, so the fact that all y'all are interacting with us and giving us requests and giving us your opinions it means the world so we decided to show some love to y'all um, the last three months of March, or three weeks of March, excuse me, uh, we're going to do some requests. And today we are talking about the temptations. Um, shout out to Like Mike on Instagram. Um, that L is a one. Um, also known as M Boogie. <laughs> he hit us up in the DMs maybe back in January. Okay. What's like, up, buddy? My guy? Yeah, shout out to M Boogie, yeah. man. He hit us with the, hey, man, when y'all going to do a temptations episode? I'm like, you know what? We got you. And, and he picked the right one for me, buddy. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I know this is school's movie because school's a big Temptations fan anyway. We'll get into it. And I know yeah. Ray P loves the film as well. Yeah. Who doesn't love the Temptations? Loser. I ain't person. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. And I guess I can't say film because it really is a mini series. It's technically yeah. television, but yeah. we're gonna treat it like a movie. Um, keep hitting us up with your requests. Like I said, every week for the for the March, we're gonna be doing a new one. 
Uh, yeah. So we already know what the next two are going to be. Absolutely. So we appreciate y'all. Doesn't matter how obscure it is. Um, yeah. Somebody hit us up for some and, 1980s like hip hop movie. And this um, won't be the only month as well. So don't think that like March is just specifically for that. Maybe it'll be September. Who knows? You never know. So yeah, let's just keep us up. Keep hitting us with it. And that goes for television as well. Um, Ray, yeah. Ray P specifically is the person you want to talk to for that because she is a TV fool. I don't know how you do it, Ray P. Straight up. It's crazy. I still haven't caught up on all my shows from being going on last week, but uh, somebody's got to do it. Yes. <laughs> well, we so appreciate it that it's you. Yep. Yeah. Appreciate you. We appreciate that it's you. So, Temptations, miniseries. Mm. We'll get into the synopsis real quick. It's a biography of the singers who formed the hit Motown musical act, The Temptations. Mm -hmm. Listen, I if you don't know who The Temptations are, familiar with their work, then please stop, pause. I know we tell you to go watch the movie, but before you even watch the movie, go download Tidal, Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to movies. Go shout out to your moms or your pops. Go grab their yeah. CD collection. I know they got some Temptations in the crate. Yeah, they have to. I know they have it in the tuck. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. Some of y'all, some of y'all grandparents like 28 now. So I don't know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but, say, some of these grandparents are younger. So they still should know who the Temptations is. Yeah. But Motown, sure. obviously, classic yeah. record label. Temptations, mm -hmm. the first act on Motown to win a Grammy. Come on. Which is saying when you think of all the names on Motown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be the first one to stick your chest out, like, yeah, y'all nice, but we got that first Grammy. You know what I'm saying? Grammy. I'm surprised even before Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Yeah. Like, before the Supremes, who had who's the first group to have what three number ones back to back to back? Like they was killing it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Maybe one day we'll do like a Motown episode because they are so important to the culture. We'll never Absolutely. see that again. What they did, nah, we'll never see that mm -hmm. again. And that tells in this film just it, it I, I couldn't even imagine just being in Detroit in the late 50s, early 60s. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into it. Yeah, we're going to get right into it. But yeah, the Temptations, that's what we're talking about today. Um, first experiences. Ray. Yeah. Remember your first time watching this? Uh, I do. On TV. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was like a network premiere situation when maybe ABC or one of those network N TV channels. NBC. NBC. They used to do yeah. those random... Um, biopics or time pieces and then the temptations was one of them and um y'all know i just turned 36 but uh my parents are older and my dad had like a no rap zone so all we listened to if we were in a car with him was motown solid gold greatest hits this that and the third and so when this came on like he was geeked <laughs> so uh yeah i watched it with my dad both nights sir however many nights it came on because it was pretty long uh so yeah that was my first time watching it and then it came on vh1 like every day <laughs> for years and i Fast. watched it too till i had it on what vhs mm -hmm. yeah that shows it vhs yeah. say less <laughs> say less school what about you you remember your first experience with yes the film? similar very similar um i stayed at pop's house um i it, 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 that was his that was his shit the temptations i went on this uh i was on a music kick where i was just listening to a lot of the whinings and stuff like that and pops was like yo let's try something different man he was sick of that basically and wow. he got me hip to the temptations and just so happened um the the mini series premiered and i usually went home around eight but he was mm -hmm. like nah you staying here and we watching this so yeah i remember that was a late night for me <laughs> yeah, especially in 98 like i'm yeah. sure he had to take you home he yeah. was probably like hold on ain't no uh ain't no ain't streaming i can't yeah. just stop this nah that's back in the day when you had to pop the vhs in and mm -hmm. really record it and know? i i specifically remember him talking about david ruffin boy that's david ruffin <laughs> the coldest so period yeah. and, and you know what let me ask you because you grew up i always school grew up different musically Mm -hmm. um, because I, I was like the the rap guy i missed the prime of rap we talk about this often i missed that 97 where people talk about the golden era rap i missed it because i was into michael jackson the whinings the temptations the whinings like yeah. that wow. was where i was at you couldn't move me on it so so yeah were you familiar when this came out i know pops got you hit but were you mm -hmm. already familiar with the temptations and their songs or was this like a brand new experience for you um i was hip to a lot of the music 
but not the story. The story was brand new to me, for okay. sure. Yeah, I yeah. think to a lot of us. Yeah. Um, my answer is I wish I had y'all memory or recall when it came to this. Yeah. I do with a lot of movies, but this I don't. I had no idea, and I can't remember when I watched it. Mm-hmm. Pops was a huge Motown fan. He has mm-hmm. the DVD. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I got it out of his collection. Okay. Um, in order to prep for this, it was funny. I was asking school if he had it. He said, "Man, you know how expensive that thing is on Amazon." Yeah, buddy. I'm like, shout out to pops, man, because <laughs> you know if you've been listening to us from day one, everybody knows my love of film comes from him. Yeah. And he has the DVD, and he has also the Motown. Like, there's another DVD of just the Motown history. Um, mm-hmm. it's like a two parter. Okay. Um, so he, I have that as well, but I don't remember my first time watching it or seeing it, but I remember the impact that it made. I remember how intriguing it is every single time I put it on. Um, I remember being mesmerized by David Ruffin, uh, mm-hmm. who was obviously played by Leon in this film. But that was one of the early experiences of when you can't take your eyes off of somebody. Yeah. You don't know how to explain it. You know, me and Ray, we were 11 when this came out. Yeah. Um, but you don't know how to explain it. But something about this person yeah. is just intriguing. And I had no idea about the, the temptation story or anything like that. I knew my girl and all that. But um, I loved it. I loved it. So we'll get into some stats. It was released as a two-part miniseries, mm-hmm. as we discussed, November 1st and November 2nd of 1998 yes. on NBC. Um, school, you had some info about what it went up against those so, two nights, didn't it? So uh, Sunday night, it went up against the Oprah miniseries, which was a big deal. Um, you don't know. Now you know Oprah was a big deal. Um, and then the second night, it went up against Monday Night Football and Jurassic Park. So, and, and, and it was number one on both nights. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. I, I want to just take a quick second because I, I don't think it can be overstated. Nobody beats the NFL. Right. Nope, right. Nobody beats the NFL. Mm-hmm. You can take uh, the worst two teams in the NFL and you can have maybe like the Grammys and another award show. You could probably combine those ratings and they still won't match. The I mean, it's yeah. a powerhouse. We talked about it on the Wayans episode how the Super Bowl halftime show came about because of a living color and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for it to have beaten Monday Night Football is mm-hmm. insane. That's yeah. like it, it almost makes me wonder who was playing. Like I, I, I'm kind of upset at myself for not going back and finding out. But I will say this about the stats. Um, after this show, the, uh, anth- the anthology of the Temptations went from 1400 to number four on Amazon. And the book on which the miniseries is based jumped from net number 84 on Amazon um, to number four. So it, it jumped. Mm-hmm. And, and the crazy thing about the book is it was released in 1988 um, and it's out of it was out of print. So um, Otis Williams said that he tried to talk to the book company about get it jumping again and they would not do it. And the book was selling for over two hundred dollars. On Amazon in 1998. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, For the record, November 2nd, 1998, the Dallas Cowboys beat the Philadelphia Eagles 34 to nothing. Um, They got their ass whooped. So maybe that's why people was like, let's see what what Dave and Otis and them talking about. We ain't watching this shit no more. Oh, man. And when it was released on VHS, it sold 30,000 copies. We had it. We still got it. Yeah, yeah. I, I know we're going back to the dark ages, y'all. For a lot of our younger listeners, you're talking about yeah, VHS, VHS and yeah. all that stuff. But I mean, these numbers are astronomical for that time in mm-hmm. 1998. So we just want right. to make sure everybody knows what the equivalent it is and how big of a deal this was. I mean, it's Leon who played David Ruffin mentioned like I was getting phone calls from studios I hadn't heard from in years mm-hmm. because the ratings were just that stupid. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was directed by Alan Arkush. Um, a huge success, as we mentioned, and it is currently streaming on everybody's favorite app, Tubi, Tubi. as well as Crackle, Amazon, um, via the Freebie app. So yes. it has some ads if you're watching on Prime, but you can watch it. And it's also on Pluto um, as well. So we'll get into the cast. Charles Malik Whitfield as Otis Williams. D.B. Woodside as Melvin Franklin. Teron, I think it's Ter- Teron or Taryn Brooks as Eddie Kendricks. Christian Payton as Paul Williams and Leon as David Ruffin. Um, we also have Jennifer Lewis as Mama Rose Franklin, Tina Lifford as Hayes, Gina Rivera as Cousin Faith, <laughs> aka <laughs> Josephine, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oba Babatunde as Barry Gordy, Eric Michael Tristan as Smokey Robinson. Um, that actor who played the young Smokey, he actually passed away last year, yeah. So, RIP to him, mm-hmm. 
Charles Lee as David, or excuse me, as Dennis Edwards, Vanessa Bell Calloway as Johnny May Matthews, Mel Jackson as Norman Whitfield. And real quick, did y'all notice who played Diana Ross? Yeah. Uh Bianca Lawson. Mm -hmm. yeah, about to say, Brianna. Mm -hmm. Bianca Lawson Bianca played Lawson. Diana Ross, man. Mm -hmm. Watch me squash this shit. <laughs> <laughs> shout out, shout out yeah. to say the last dance, man. Um, I did forget to um mention Ray. I don't know who played Ray. I forgot to write his name down. So my apologies. I'll find that and shout shout him out as we go along. Um, but I do want to make sure he gets some credit because he was an original member. Chaz Lamar, Stephen Elbridge, yes. Ch uh, Chaz Lamar Shepard. Excuse me. Yes, it's Elbridge uh, Bryant. Al Bryant. Al Bones. Yeah, Bones. I know yeah. we talked about uh we talked about him and set it off briefly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he played uh he played in that movie or had a role Thank in that movie. But yeah, shout out to that initial cast. There's a lot of other people in the film and we'll try we gotta, to reference them. We gotta mention uh Vanessa Bell Calloway, man. I thought I did. Nah, Johnny May Matthews. Yeah, I, 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 I mentioned her. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bell Jackson is Norman Whitfield. I don't know if I said him. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. All right, so as far as awards go, it won the Motion Picture Sound Editors Award for the best sound editing for music and dialogue, as well as um, an NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Television or Miniseries. And it also won a Primetime Emmy for Outstanding Director um, in a Miniseries or Movie. So mm -hmm. big deal. Big, big deal. And it's still... It amazes me. Y'all know how I kind of nitpick certain things, and I always mention, like, man, I would love to see this as a miniseries, or I'd love to see this. Mm -hmm. Like, the fact that this came out in 1998 and it's still thoroughly enjoyable. Yes. Yeah. That's everything. It was really ahead of its time. Yeah. Really well done. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll talk about the origin of it. So we mentioned the five members of The Temptations, the 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 original five, I think, is, is what they're coined. Yes, the original five, absolutely. And it was based on Otis Williams' book. Mm -hmm. He had a book deal, and it was kind of tied into a, a, a movie deal. So let me ask you this before we talk about more about the origin. Okay. The one knock, and it's not really a knock, but it's just a fact that you could say about this is it was really told from one person's perspective. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm sure yeah. if each member had their own telling or retelling of these accounts, yeah. They might see things a little bit differently. Does Absolutely. that do you feel that it was, I guess, more so catered toward Otis, or it kind of showed him more in a favorable light versus what it wasn't? Or how did you feel about that, you know, one person perspective on a group? Well, everybody else had gone on to glory. So mm -hmm. um, this is the last perspective that you have. I wrote down that um it was very much Otis's own biases, his own feelings towards everybody else and his own story. But that's it, you know, to the victor goes to spoils and he's uh, still living, correct? Like, mm -hmm, definitely. He's still he's here. He's still doing that shuffle uh, with all those 40 year olds. So the winner tells the story and that's just what it is. Ironically enough, though, as much as Otis tried to put his own spin in favorable outlook, I was like, oh, they hated this nigga. <laughs> and I could see why, like as much work as he put into coming off as favorable as the one who held it all together, as uh, Mama Rose said, I was like, oh yeah, I could see how they wouldn't like this nigga. Because how, Dennis, you a whole new member and you go get with Eddie and David and not Otis and Blue, you know? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> something ain't cleaning your water, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What about um, you, school? So, so I'll say this to refute what you're saying. So, the book was originally written in '88. Mm -hmm. So, it, they were alive um, when the book was written. Um, all the members were alive now. But Otis wrote it. Okay, so yes, he did write it. But okay, so in 2002 they revised it, and he spoke on what you're saying, like okay, now everyone's gone. Let me say this, and he said. Um, that one of the things that he does regret about making this book is he kind of didn't, he was a little, he was friendly basically. Cause you figure he wrote it in 88. Everyone was alive. He didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Like, so yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I, I think he could have uh, been a little bit more honest on some things for sure. 
was everybody alive in 88? No. Yes. No. Yes. Uh, except Paul Williams. Yeah, Paul wasn't alive in 88. And when did Eddie but pass? Eddie died in 92. Okay, then. And David Ruffin died in 91. 91. And yeah. I know Melvin died in 95. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Then. Yep. Okay. And Ray, I, mean, I know he wasn't. He was like, kids in Toledo. So. Who is Ray? Huh? Who is Ray? My fault. I'm I'm, I'm thinking uh, about something else. What you say, Rachel? I said allegedly they all got a couple kids in Toledo. I believe it. Oh yeah, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> cross over that. Cross over that uh, <laughs> Michigan line. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, I definitely believe it. So you, sure. So yeah, it was definitely about the book. The one thing I do want to point out is Otis Williams didn't have much say with the film itself, no. mm -hmm. even though they used the book for the material. Mm -hmm. And we'll we we'll have a section. Um, where we talk about some of the differences in real life versus what we saw in the film. Mm -hmm. um, but you definitely saw his favoritism towards Melvin. Um, that yeah. was his right hand. Mm -hmm. And he was shown in a much more favorable light than a lot of the other members. Yeah. Um, one, one famous school's been saying this for years about how like, bro, like I can't believe they getting away with all this acting like David and them was the only ones on some trash. Like yeah. the whole group was on, on some nonsense. And I know we'll talk about that. Um, but you know, David, Eddie, they were seen as antagonists for most of the second half of the film. Yeah. Um, Eddie Kendricks was given more of a sympathetic feel, yeah. mm -hmm. um, even though that might not have been the real thing, uh, what was going on in real life. Uh, Dennis Edwards, even though he did replace David, he wasn't heavily focused on. Um, and they didn't mention a lot of the problems that he had with Otis, going to what you just said, Rachel. Like, mm -hmm. how are you replacing this person, but you're going with the people you replace at, you know, right. later on? Right. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that they, you know, just didn't put in the film or made it look a certain way. Right. Um, I will say this. Otis Williams came to set one time during the filming. And he mm -hmm. came on the day where there was a scene. The scene isn't even in the movie. It was a scene between uh, David Ruffin and Tammy Terrell. And it was a domestic violence scene. It was like in the apartment. Mm -hmm. And Otis was there. And he saw one take and he started shaking. So he started, he like, this is too real for me. Like, I've seen mm -hmm. David mm -hmm. act like this. I've seen this behavior. Like, and he's yeah. kind of saw the spirit of David in Leon. Mm -hmm. He never came back. He was like, I can't, I live this. This is too real. I can't come here and watch this stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, that, I mean, that kind of just tells you how intense things were. I mean, we're talking about the 50s and 60s. You know, shit was wild. So, I will to go off of that, what you said. Now, he, he came twice. Like I said, I, I, I read the book. Okay. Um, he did one twice. Okay. So my bad. The second, the second scene that he uh, came for was when David, the, the infamous, Ain't nobody come, come to see you, Otis. Mm -hmm. The reason why Leon did that is because Otis was there. <laughs> oh, so, I didn't even know that. Yes. I didn't even know that part. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we'll talk more about that. Rachel. Yes. Probably goes without saying, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Classic or nah? Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. Classic and yes. culturally relevant. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think that's a unanimous decision. Anybody who's ever seen it, they can say the same. I do have one question for you because mm -hmm. um, I always think about this, especially in the beginning uh, with them. You know, I'm fascinated with just that. Anytime you end at the beginning of something, it always mm -hmm. fascinates me, you know, being mm -hmm. at the beginning of Google or Amazon yes. and things like that. So 1958 Detroit, not knowing that you're really about to be at the beginning of Motown mm -hmm. and just how, I guess accessible it was for them. Yes. Yeah. It made me think specifically when they were singing after school and you know walking Josephine home. Mm -hmm. What era would you guys have liked to have grown up in? Like if you picked a decade to say, let's just say you picked a year to graduate high school. Mm -hmm. What year would you have liked to have graduated high school? Man. Oh. I mean, minus all the racial tensions, I probably would have. I mean, my dad graduated in. 65 and my mom graduated in 68 um okay. i don't know he would have liked that era just for the music to be young and yes. listening to a little bit of everything maybe 70 maybe 72 something like that you know okay. yeah i'm i might agree with you on that um especially because you know when i was i wanted to be a singer so the 60s, the 70s was the prime for that. Like, yeah. if, you know how they say in the 90s, you either rap or play basketball. Back then, you you were singing. Like, yeah. everybody wanted to join Motown. Um, so, yeah, that would have been me, for sure. I'm going to go later. I probably would have wanted to graduate high school by 85. Okay. 
Okay. 85. Something about that 80s hip hop era, just the intro, the beginning of it. Yeah. Um, it just fascinates me. That could be in part because I did go to this hip hop exhibit in New York and just saw all those photos from the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with the B-boys and the DJs, like the authentic in the park, brown beginning of brown sugar type hip hop. Yeah. And okay. just seeing those photos, it would just look real live. Like it was just a live time. You at the ground level yes. of hip hop. Like that would just been something to experience. But nothing can replace the Motown era. Well, I mean, if I was, my goodness, man, if I was 17 and could meet Barry Gordy and yeah. I could sing, like, come on, that's, man, that's right. life changing. That's Side right. note. Um, for people who don't know, me and this guy went on a family vacation to Hitsville, mm -hmm. and I was in heaven. Like that was amazing. To that, the, everything's still the same. I don't. If, for people who don't know, Hitsville was actually Barry Gordy's home, so it was part of his house. They kept everything the same. Like the cigarettes uh, machine was there. The mm -hmm. the room where they recorded it was I mean it was beautiful man we met Martha Reeves mm -hmm. like it was it was amazing it was amazing yeah we met Martha Reeves who was displayed in this film I think Pops got an autograph from somebody yes um side note it's not in a very good area I mean it was a little bit better then but from what I read now like it's it's kind of like the White House <laughs> like it's, it's just not in a good area. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's what's happened over the last 70 years. But yeah, yeah. I've been to Hitsville multiple times as well. Um, being from Toledo, so many mm -hmm. random bus tours and Detroit Art Museum and Detroit African American Museum, you know, all of that. Yes. So shout out to Detroit history and Detroit in their revitalization, not the gentrification, though. <laughs> shout out. Yeah, that's a real thing. Facts. That's a real thing. So, um, there is an interesting story about Leon and how he got cast. Okay. I just want to kind of get into that real quick. Okay. So I don't know if anybody's listened to our five heartbeats episode. Mm -hmm. It was the first movie we ever did. Like, I think it was episode three. We did an intro. We did Will Smith. And then we did five heartbeats. Mm -hmm. This is pre Ray P. Pre. So I think, I think we want to revisit five heartbeats and have Rachel's opinion on it yes. because we love that movie. Like we just love it. And that's why it was the first movie we ever did. Mm -hmm. A lot of good information, but from we can just talk about it now because this bothers me. Um, and I'll get into my point about Leon, but I just want to stop real quick because this really bothers me. Okay. I hate when people try to make the Temptations five heartbeats comparison. Does that bother you as yes. well, Rachel? Um, not really. I've I've heard it, but not enough to bother me. It's two different films, two different. I don't even necessarily want to say two different eras, but the Dells, who the Five Heartbeats is based off in The Temptations, two different sounds. Eh, it's just different. It's not really it, comparable other than being in the same era. The reason it bothers me is because like, when Versus was at its peak, I remember people was making mm -hmm. fake verses about Eddie King and David Ruffin. That it, The comparison bothers me because the Five Heartbeats aren't a real group. Fiction. And it still amazes me how many people mm -hmm. think that the Five Heartbeats is a real group. Yeah, yes. well, people and don't know, but th I think that would. What else would you put the Temptations movie up against? Probably Jackson Five American Dream. Just another real image. Like the so biggest thing is you have person. real people to emulate when you're making the Temptations, versus the Five Heartbeats were original. It, and the Five Heartbeats was inspired, like you know, Robert Townsend's favorite group was the, the temptations. temptations his favorite singer was david ruffin he had david ruffin and eddie kendrick as technical advisors before the studio said hell nah yeah he uh he decided to go against it because they didn't want the people to think the big red character was barry gordy and uh yeah you just don't you you don't have time for that man right <laughs> but it getting... also well, i'm sorry i don't mean to cut you off school but it also was based off the dells who do the singing so it's not really comparable, but I'm not bothered by people who don't know the music history or the history between the two. Eh. It, it might just be me. It's zoned out. I'm, it zones me out because I'm like, you know that these are yeah. fictional people. I think even Charlemagne on uh, Breakfast Club mm -hmm. was talking about it. He was confused. Like, what? What well, you mean five heart beats aren't real? I'm like, yeah. what are you talking about, bro? Yeah, it's just like you said. Um, the reason why Robert Townsend made this movie is because he wanted to know why Eddie Kendricks and David Ruffin left The Temptations. That's the that's the whole premise of why he wanted to make the five heart beats. Yeah. Why do these groups break up? Yep. 
And that's when he got him. And then the Dells came in afterwards, like you said, Rachel, mm -hmm. and ended up being the technical advisors. But either way, that just bothers me. But I mentioned that because Leon got cast because of the five heartbeats. Yeah. So he met Otis Williams via five heartbeats. Mm -hmm. And I think it was around 1994. Otis Williams got in contact with him, told him, hey, I got this book deal. It's tied in with a movie deal. I really want you to play me. Like, I want mm -hmm. you to play me when this movie comes out. All right, cool. Yeah. So the time comes around. The studio hits him up. Executives like, hey, you know, Otis told us that he wants you to play him. But before we got to get talking, I just want to know who do you think you should play? So the exec asked Leon. He said, you know, I'm, I'm honored that Otis wants me to play him. Yeah. But if I'm being honest, if I'm giving yeah. my honest opinion, no. I will be best yeah. suited for this film if I play David Ruffin. And, and 100%. 100%. And all, all the executives was like, my goodness, we're so happy you said that because <laughs> we thought the same thing. and We had no idea who was going to play David Ruffin if you didn't say yes. Mm. Um, so they told Otis Williams. And Otis, obviously, he understood um, but I always thought that was a pretty cool story um, as far as how he got into it. Have you listened to uh, the old podcast, Strong Black Lead? I want to say it's Janelle James who is doing the interview. It's, I can't If it's not her, it's somebody else because they changed hosts between seasons. But they interviewed Leon and mm -hmm. he talked about um, this film and how he essentially was a method actor and utilized that tool throughout the whole filming of this movie. So school, when you mentioned, you know, the whole, ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis, that was him. And that was an ad lib situation. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was the real Otis or uh, Tehran that wanted him to take that out because they were pissed. He said they were not happy with me on set because I really was that nigga, David Ruffin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Similar to um, <laughs> similar to how um, Michael, Michael Wright, Wright was really in character the whole time for Eddie King. Yep. So mm -hmm. during his drunk belligerent appearance, he was every time they said cut, he was still acting that same way. Yeah, I mean, I think it was it was Charles Malik Whitfield, the actor who played Otis, that was upset, yep. and the director pulled Leon to the side and was like, "Hey, man, like he's upset. Like you can't just do that." He was like, "He's supposed to be upset. He's not supposed <laughs> to he like it." Like, no, <laughs> yeah, like he looked at the director like, "Did you see his face? Like, yeah. did, ain't that the reaction you want?" And he was like. Damn, you got a point. Yeah. Kept it in the film. And of Dang. course, it's the most classic line. Yes. And Leon still to this day says he kind of regrets it because people still run up on Otis Williams in 2023 <laughs> and say, ain't nobody come to see you, Otis. So the real life implications of, man, this is a real person and people running yeah. up saying this line from this movie, uh, you know, that's a little. That shit to Otis Williams. They don't even know what that nigga really look like. That, that's <laughs> right. what I was saying. Right. I'm like, man, how many people know Otis that they pulled up on him? <laughs> Um, but yeah, man, that's a classic. It's a classic. And I, I it probably did more for Otis. Right. Yeah. Now you a household name. <laughs> right. From that line alone. And people still talk about that to this day. Straight up. So y'all just want to get right into it. Best Let's scenes. Go. Let's go. Ray P. Okay. Give us give us one. We'll just go in uh I'm gonna let y'all go back and forth and I'm just gonna chime in because I'm sure y'all going to cover everything. There's no need for all three of us. I'm sure we all got the same scenes. All right, let's get it. Uh, to a degree, because I didn't write down a whole lot just because as a whole, I love the movie. It's important mm. to me as a collective body of work. So you. I'll start with just the intro, because that whole Mr. Earl scene, we see Otis and essentially Alan or Bones' passion, where they kind of fall in love with music. Mm -hmm. and the stage and leading into them getting those uh, perms or that lie, the conk, you know, because if you've ever had a relaxer, if your pores is open, that shit burns. <laughs> can, I, can I touch you off real quick, Ray? Yeah. Um, I wrote that down in my notes just because I don't know if school remembers this. Do you remember when I was in eighth grade I and remember, I got one? Man. I remember, yeah, man. man. Absolutely. I know it's Ray good. got that. I had the I got the S curl. Mm. The S curl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is 2000. This is this was yeah. This is my eighth grade year for sure. I remember being in the kitchen sink and school. <gasps> yeah, school was getting weak because my head was on fire because I wanted some braids. I wanted braids, and I was, yeah. I don't know why or what I was thinking, but I, something was like, yo, let me put this shit in my hair. My mom did it, and I remember school being there that same night and was just like, yo, like. Getting weak, getting weak the whole time. It's just a yeah. funny moment. Yes, I, yeah. didn't know, I didn't know if you remember that or not. Yes. Um. So I'm like you with the with the scenes, but I did. I wrote, I wrote a few. Um. My first big scene is the New Year's party where David Ruffin joins the group. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so movies like to do this little thing where if you don't pay attention, you won't notice it. Or if you don't know, um, if before they let David sing, they let Jimmy sing, his older brother, which is a, a callback to they originally wanted Jimmy Ruffin to join the Temptations. Yeah. Played by Lamont Wrecker. Yes, shout out to him. Shout out to Tyler Perry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Tyler, Tyler Perry All-Star. Yes, that's the that's the first time you see Leon as as David Ruffin as the singer, mm-hmm. and he steals the show. That that yeah. no who man, listen. It what is was the note? Huh? What was the note? <laughs> yeah, you know the note. You know the note. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rachel, stupid. I just want to piggyback on that because do you guys does anybody have a favorite scene, like definitive favorite scene? I personally do. Or do you, Rachel? Um, you don't have to name it. I just didn't. I just want to know if you do. I do to a degree. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I go back and forth with this. This is probably it's definitely my favorite scene in the first part, mm-hmm. like in part one. I mentioned earlier just how captivating Leon was. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Not even Leon, just David Ruffin, how he embodied that his personality. And there was something about that whole the temptations weren't, you know, still in that hitless temptations era. Yeah. Yeah, and that New Year's, New Year's, I love New Year's. I just love fresh starts and that new beginning. So that whole scene, mm-hmm. just the the chills I get thinking about all those Motown artists on a New Year's Eve, and like you get to see them on stage. Just yeah. like I can only imagine what that would have been like. But there's something about the way Jimmy says, "My baby brother David," and he yeah. comes up and he, I'm not gonna do the note like school did. Hey, <laughs> went to work. He went to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like until this point, like to the, the oldest was like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. all of that. Like you mm-hmm. felt that. Like I, I love that scene. He just took it over, mm-hmm. and that's when you knew. Like that's a bad boy right there. Yeah, dude. Yeah. If you didn't know anything about David Ruffin, that made you want to look him up and look up his music. Yes. Because mm-hmm. how you just come in and steal the show like that? Like who yeah. are you, bro? Because we yeah. didn't really get much of David uh, other than meeting him and his brother at Motown. Yes, um, and they told him their name was the Elgins and stuff like that. And like, like wristwatch, like the wristwatch. <laughs> um, but seeing that, that was the first time we saw him sing. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a bad boy. I love that scene. Yes. I absolutely love that scene. Yes. Um, Rachel, I don't know if you got any two cents to add to it as well. Uh, no, that's it. That's probably one of my favorite scenes and what I had next on the list. <laughs> got you, got you. Um, it was perfection. It was almost mm-hmm. a damn near perfect scene. Rachel, I think you next on the scene list. Okay, I'll go to... The first My Girl performance, okay. just because this is essentially their big break. You know, they're on mm-hmm. TV. The whole families or all of the families are gathered at, um, I'm assuming, Hayes and his dad and Otis's father's home watching. We see Josephine. We already know that she and Otis ain't really rocking like that. But mm-hmm. I'm going to put on a show for the family. You know, she was mm-hmm. over his shit by then. Yeah. But- Florence Ballard, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Um, so just that, and My Girl is such a classic song. Even now, people, I was in, like I said, I was in Antigua. I can't tell you how many times I heard it on karaoke, people doing My Girl. Yes. Still hits today. Can we give yes. it up for the writers, songwriters? Amen. Real music. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's, a real, that's real. That's real. I mean, I, I just... I don't think it can be overstated how and that song came out so long ago and to still have that such of a reach and such an impact. Yeah, the anniversary of it hit number one was a couple of days ago for mm. the first time. Yeah, okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm gonna piggyback off what you said. Now I, I definitely have that, but I have prior to that. Um, if you don't know, a lot of their hits, not necessarily big hits, but the little hits they were having was sang by Eddie Kendricks, and mm-hmm. in that scene. Um, Smokey has a song for them and he's like yo I got a song for y'all and Eddie immediately sits down and mm-hmm. he says nah this one's for David <laughs> and, uh, yeah and, yeah and, um, Melvin says and and then he proceeds to you know sing the song and let him and then my girl when he sit, hits yeah. that and they start because yeah. back then All that of that. Was that's how you 
that's how you write a song. You know what I mean? It. So they knew at that moment their life was about to change. And that's it. it. School, you hit it on the head. And I think that that is why I'm such an R&B girl. Yeah. Because my foundation of music is songs about love yes. and about uh, courting and chasing. Like, bitch, not bitch, not back then. But like, woman, <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me show you. Let me count the ways how much I love you. Let me take care of you. Yeah. It just reminded me when you was doing all of that later on in the film where um they reunite for the big reunion and yes. um david goes you got to have the voices <laughs> yeah got to <laughs> that was he and, uh that was he and eddie they led to your point the majority mm -hmm. of the songs absolutely but otis lead <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Rachel wants you. Hey, we got a whole section in the pod, man. Come see about me. Rachel, Period. that's where that's where it started. That's mm -hmm. the origin. Period. Rachel, like, bring back begging. Yeah. Bring, bring back begging. Yeah. Bring back. Back. You're a new album, Matt, brother. Yeah, man. That's he it. Said, if I got to beg and plead for, for your sympathy, sympathy, I don't mind. Hey, mean that much. Period. To me. I ain't too proud. To, hey, everybody too proud to beg now. Yeah, that's, that's the fact. problem. You better that humble yourself. Problem. Yeah. No, I was listening to I Miss You on the way over here. Come on, man. Don't get started. Which is a David Ruffin solo. I was going to ask you, David Ruffin or Teddy Harold Teddy. Melvin and the Blue Notes? No. AKA I David know you Ruffin. like Harold Melvin. I know you like the Harold Melvin one. I was listening to oh, David Ruffin. Oh, man. They close. They, they close. close. They close. close. They, they close. close. But just that, going back to what you guys just said, especially you, Rachel, just that mm -hmm. emphasis of I, I've said this before, like, he missed that woman. Yes. You can hear that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I oh, missed oh, that woman. God. I love that shit. It's a little something, something on the David Ruffin version, though. Yeah. It's a little extra sauce. Yeah, it's just a little David. Yeah. That's all it is, is David. Yep. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, man. So, they don't make songs like that. And I can go through. Now y'all about to have me on a old school trip. That's the it. The whole time, man. Um, I love you, all that. Like, just those mm -hmm. songs. I know that's not a Temptation song, but <laughs> just that real raw emotion. You can hear it in the lyrics. Yes. Like, them, them dudes is singing. Like, they crying in the microphone. So, like, I can't So, let me, let me say this for the listeners. If you've never heard the song, Since I Lost My Baby by the Temptations, David sings that song, and it's levels to this song where he's singing it, and then he goes into emotion, like, all right, now y'all know I lost my baby. He, I mean, he rips this song to shreds, man. It's just ridiculous. David was different, man. Um, he was different. Different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, my fault. I don't know whose part it is on the scene. I think it's on you, school. All right. So the next scene I have is the crossover. Okay. The crossover. When Shelly comes in. Yes. It's, it's, it's time. You guys are the biggest black group. But now it's time for you to be the biggest group in the world. And of course, Dave is missing because yeah. he's a little under the weather. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's it's letting you know that what Shelly is about to get into. You know what I mean? And also that that was the era. You know, you had to convert to the white audience. To yeah. play at the Copa was, was huge then. And that was the goal, to play at the Copa. And at the end of that, you see... Um, Eddie and Paul in the car. Paul, who used to only drink milk, is, is sipping his alcohol. Uh -huh. and, and Eddie asked him, what you think? And he said, man, I don't want to be a sellout. In those days, you was a sellout if you were singing Burt Bacharach or a Frank Sinatra yeah. song. But my, yeah. We don't want to hear that. Shout out to Dion Warwick, who did yes. all the Burt Bacharach. <laughs> yeah. He oh, RIP, he just died, didn't he? Um, but yeah. I feel you on that. That leads me. I'll lead into my next one then. David Ruff. I'm David Ruffin, and these are the Temptations. Temptation. That whole performance. One, um, I didn't say it, but it goes into the scene where Blue and Otis go to David's house because he's missed this meeting. And David is feeling himself, you know, mm -hmm. and I refuse to let you go. Mm -hmm. Like, he's on his own shit. Kicks Flim out, whatever his name is. Um, yeah. We get the infamous, ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis, right mm -hmm. there. But they are telling him, like, look, nigga, 
it's not about you. We are a group. It's yes. never going to be David Ruffin in The Temptations. Mm -hmm. Get on or get out, nigga. Yeah. Peace out. You threatening to leave? Okay, we'll let you. Here's the door. And yes. so he tried to play it like, no, y'all know I'll be kidding. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be kidding. Kidding. We successful now. now. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say, in his defense, though, that's what that's what was happening in in Motown. That's Diana Ross just got the group changed to Diana Ross and the Supremes. Yeah. Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, like yeah. Martha, Martha um, and the Vandella. Vandella. Like yeah. he had a right to ask for that. He but really did. Thing, the rest of them are foundational members of the organization. Absolutely, David was not. Remember, we Otis Williams and the Siberians. Yes. Like, right. That, that was, was the original group. Yeah, Otis yeah, yeah. Williams in the distance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it only stopped being Otis Williams till they became the Elgins, you know? Yes. So um, the fact that Otis was willing to give up his name out mm -hmm. front for the betterment of the group, for the collective, and here you come, nigga, off the street, just because you got a couple of hits under your belt <laughs> on the lead vocal, you think it should come to you? Like, no, that's not fair. It doesn't make any sense. And it's not about you. So mm -hmm. then he comes in. They perform essentially without him. And this nigga gets the spotlight on him, comes up, finishes the song, hits that little move, <laughs> takes the mic from Paul to go into losing you. Like, nigga, they should have whooped his ass. <laughs> and so kicking him out the group after that was inevitable because now you playing in my face. Mm -hmm. mm. can't say nothing I, else I, 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 <laughs> I agree just to kind of give my two cents I mentioned the shout in the New Year's Eve I think mm -hmm. my other scene would probably have to be the intervention Okay, for Melvin and Otis show up just yes. because that was it's a quotable scene anytime I watch it I'm automatically stopping it um, like you said David was feeling himself mm -hmm. Flynn was in the mix we don't know who Flynn really is at this time yes. but we know he's a, a pest he's an annoyance mm -hmm. I don't That's even know why you hear real quick you said what your service provider yeah yes. he definitely a service provider absolutely <laughs> yes. absolutely he was the bag man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we'll just put it like that uh, whatever true. David needs he got it and you know he, David was feeling himself as you as you said a couple a uh, couple little hits, mm -hmm. and now he's the man. So I just love that whole scene. I love the fact that we see this in all of those groups back in the day, just yeah. trying to stay together, and there's always one or two people you got to keep tabs on or just, you know, school, you made the point. That's just how it was back then. Yeah. Obviously, you don't see a lot of solo acts because yeah. it, it was a group thing. So mm -hmm. it's it's harder to keep control of five personalities, especially when you have someone like David. Absolutely. Um, who went from so humble and for the first time in my life and it, it everything's it right the, the, the craziest part about it is back in those days that was unheard of for you to be a part of a group make a solo album and then come back to the group that mm -hmm. wasn't a thing mm -hmm. like if you left the group you was out you was out yeah. yeah so um a lot of a lot of it too was um from from what i read in the book a lot of them didn't want David in the group because he was already a solo artist and they were afraid that he would, that's what he was doing. He was yeah. using them to mm -hmm. become a solo artist. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Eddie specifically was like, nah, I don't want, we don't want him in the group. And then of course they became tight as thieves, but yeah, yeah cause they were, it was a strict, like the temptation is a permanent move. There ain't mm -hmm. no, we a group, we going to roll as a group yeah. Yeah. to the end of time. Ain't no solo acts, no, none of that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's funny how that always works. And like you said, Rachel, another timeless scene is that spotlight flashing on them, mm -hmm. them coming in. It's just the look on everybody's faces when you know you can't do nothing. Mm -hmm. that you, can do. you can't do anything unless you want to be super unprofessional. That man yeah. said, I'm David Ruffin, and these are the temptations. <laughs> and kept it simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and kept it moving. Straight up. And and went straight into the performance to the next thing like he was supposed to Paul just slid over into his little section like that shit is crazy they absolutely yes. should have whooped that nigga ass absolutely so, and as we see you know it's back in that time they were very strict on how you got paid it, you know there was exactly. a mention of there was a mention of when they were on the uh you know the reunion tour you know we they know we get paid of seven yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. seven. Yeah, so it was like they couldn't throw, you can't throw a fit on stage and stop them because that's messing up the money. So yep. you gotta let David do his thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Wild. Wild stuff, man. Um, Who's up, scene-wise? 
Uh, it's on me, but I got two because I wanted to call back to this one as we talk about their success. When they're all pulling up to Motown, parked out in the Cadillacs, that's one of my favorite scenes just because, nigga, I've arrived. You know, look at yeah, it. Right. We've walking up here before, not even catching a bus. We walked. Now we strolling around the corner in the caddies, you know, and everybody lined up. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. But um, in regards to wanting to whoop David's ass, David stealing the mic from um, Dennis from Dennis for Ain't Too Proud to Big. Yep. Like, uh, they were absolutely correct. Otis was right this time to be trying to fight this nigga backstage. Yes. <laughs> because what kind of audacity do you have? And he smoked it. Like, I'm not going to hold you. Like, nigga ain't lost it. But you come and do this. Do you hear that? Do you hear the crowd out mm -hmm. there? <laughs> I Kill love it. this nigga. He's a menace. He, he menaces society. And my favorite part of that scene <laughs> is very subtle. Mm -hmm. Maybe not even that subtle. My favorite part is before the song ends, the way he puts that mic down and just kind of hops off stage. He starts, <laughs> hey, the way he starts clapping it, like he was, <laughs> he really thought. That okay, this is it. They let me back in. Nah, it, it's not even oh. that. It's going to Rachel's point. Like he before the song ended, he put that mic down and kind of scurried off because he knew I'm mm -hmm. they about to whoop my ass <laughs> in here. Period. I gotta get off the stage before. And you see how quick everybody ran after mm -hmm. like, bro, what is you on? And as a as a as a as somebody in the audience, you just think you got a surprise, like, yeah. oh, David Ruffin right. showed David's up. Coming right. back. Um, side note, he did that three times. Yeah. And yeah. they actually considered letting him back in the group, but he missed the, he missed the show. The show that they were like, all right, we're going to let you back. Come mm -hmm. to this date, blah, 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 blah. He didn't show up. Yeah. And yeah. Typical David Ruffin fashion. He, he, he show up to the ones he ain't invited to. <laughs> and the one that we want you at, you don't even show up. He didn't show up. Go mm -hmm. figure. Go figure. What you got, school? Um, I definitely had that. That was that was on there. Um, But I'm going to go a little ahead of you a little bit. To when David gets kicked out the group. Okay. What? That whole scene of All him of that. that All of and that. him going off. You mother, you can't do it like me. Y'all can't, y'all can't do this to me. This is my group. And then how he stopped <laughs> and gave that smirk. Like, you motherfuckers. You All right, I got something for you. And yeah. that was probably when he said, All right, I'm at y'all next show. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm at your next show, man. Mm -hmm. Straight up. Yeah, that always gets me weak, man. Yes. That part, just because there was always a meme. It was a meme back in the day where how you talk to McDonald's workers when they when they stop serving breakfast at 10.01. <laughs> you think you could do this to me? <laughs> you can use that for anything, man. Yes. And when you I somebody swear. use a thing, here's what's so important that we want to highlight. Only certain people can act like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David Ruffin knew, like, I, right, I'm still a star to where I can wreck all y'all shit. Mm -hmm. I can come to your shows. I can steal the thunder, all of that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Otis, Blue. Yeah. Ain't none Absolutely. of them. They ain't able to do it. If you out the group, you out the group, and you going to work. Uh, you going to work for the dairy, like bones. Yeah. Straight up. You know, you got a, you got an extra milkman route. Like, what's up? Yeah. So I love the fact that he like he as much as David was on trash, he knew when to flex, and he mm -hmm. knew he had that capability. Like, yo, I'm still David Ruffin, bro. Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. So I love that. I love that. Um, what you got, school? Um, the next one I got is uh, the downfall of Paul, man. Mm -hmm. Um, him being. So Leon did his thing in this. Mm -hmm. I don't think Christian Payton gets enough love. Yeah. Um, him playing Paul. When he performed at uh Once in My Life, and and for them to for them to know he was wet and try to calm him down, and he's like, mm -hmm. get off of me. I performed this at the Grammys. I can't I can't perform this at your house, mama. I can't yeah. perform this at your house, mama Rose. Like Bro, you, you felt for him, man. Yeah. You felt for him. It's my guy, man. Paul. Um, yeah, 100 percent The man who would not even take a drink. Yes. And we talk about, or not we, but they talk about how road life has an effect on people. Look at all these artists now who don't look how they looked when they came out. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's glorified. Yeah, but rockstar lifestyle might, might not, not make it. it, and they ain't. They ain't. That's a fact. And they ain't. Them vocals is fried. Them looks is fried. 
Mm-hmm. They had a very, they had a very live fast, die young mentality. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Um, I'll get into my next one, and partially because this is one of my favorite songs, is David coming to Eddie's performance. So we see him singing "Keep on Trucking," but when they get into "You're My Everything," I love that song. When I tell you, that's my motherfucking shit. <laughs> oh my god just okay. to watch them and they had a good chemistry on stage so and again you got to have the voices so look at them and just again singing this love song you're my everything like you truly must know magic girl and right. this. <laughs> yes i i love that song too i love the way david comes in and says baby that part that hey, part, part. uh that's just one of my favorite scenes, just because of that in the song choice. Yes. Real quick, before we get to school's next scene, can I just, <laughs> could you imagine in the 70s, um, you know, I got tickets to the Temptations, and you got to say, which ones? Hey. <laughs> Bruh. Which ones hey. are we going to? Because it really, Bruh. is it David, Dennis, and Ed? Because <laughs> if we go in there, I'm down. If not, I don't know. I'm probably going to David, Dennis, and Eddie. Oh, oh yeah, I'm, well, ain't no problem. Them, yo, them three, you know. Yeah. And listen, let me say it like this: I'm not saying that I'm not going to both, but I know for sure I'm going to yeah. David, Eddie, that and uh, part. Dennis. That part. If if Carolina basketball is playing <laughs> at the same time as Otis and Melvin, depending on who they play, I appreciate it, bro. But you got to find somebody else to go with. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like I, right, you know, what I'm saying I ain't, I ain't going. Mm-hmm. So that's just a dilemma. Like I couldn't imagine, like hitting my girl up and be like, "Yo, you know I got tickets to the Temptations. Like which ones?" And I got the wrong <laughs> ones. Like nigga, my real man got me ones to the right one. I'm like, get somebody my else. Real man, it. take him to see David. <laughs> take your side yeah. chick to go see Otis. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, ain't nobody coming with you to see Otis. <laughs> Stupid. Mm-hmm. Man, every time I see that scene, I just think about that. Like, bro, think about that dilemma. Like, mm-hmm. damn, which temptations you gonna go see? Come on, everybody know the answer to that. Yeah. Like, go ahead, school. Um, my next scene would have to be Norman Whitfield, man. Mel Jackson. Shout out to him, man. Mm-hmm. Nor- from from what I understand from Otis Williams, Norman Whitfield was a cocky asshole. Yeah, he really was an asshole. He was an asshole, like straight up, just no if ends or buts about it. Um, he had he had damn good reason to be. He was mm-hmm. writing the hits, like um, he, got the hit. he wrote three number one hits um, mm-hmm. for for the Temptations. So by the by the time they did Papa was a Rolling Stone. They had won a Grammy for Cloud Nine. He was the guy. It wasn't yeah. Smokey no more. It was Norman. That's Norman. who you want to work mm-hmm. with. And he acted like that. Like yeah. he he really uh, put Dennis Edwards' father's death date in there. He claimed he didn't know. To this day, no one knows if he did. Mm-hmm. But he was a cocky asshole. Man, what a coincidence, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a coincidence. Yeah. yeah, I like that scene too. I like yeah. that scene too. When y'all start making some of this. Like right, on. right. Whoop that nigga's ass too. Um, I don't have much more, but I'll get into their reunion when their first rehearsal with everybody together. Just because when um David goes, you know, you never should have stopped being hard on this. Oh, you know, yep. just because as much shit as I clearly been talking about Otis this whole episode, you do need somebody that's um focused essentially you know um someone who is not caught up in the fame of it all and who can keep everybody together level-headed and that's what um mama rose said that he was so that and just seeing everybody for the first time now you're you've had you've had your peak of success and your star has sort of fallen so that humble pie that everybody came back with and just with an eager start and it just reminded me of like being an old ass nigga trying to go back and dance trying to learn these strolls trying to remember this old shit because that's how it'd be like nigga i'm sore <laughs> what's going on <laughs> <laughs> absolutely like yeah absolutely and i just want to emphasize feel what you want about otis mm-hmm. but he was in his own way a leader of men yeah absolutely. that's he, it because it's you have to put up there's so much 
so much that happens that frustrates you when mm-hmm. you deal with something like that and you try to keep a group together. Mm-hmm. There's so many times I'm sure Otis was like, man, you know what? I'm out. I'm done. The juice ain't worth the squeeze. Yeah. Um, but to keep it together for that long and with so many egos and personalities, like yes. I do want to make sure he gets some props. And mm-hmm. that scene is beautiful because he that's a real moment where you like, you know, some of us need yes. that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Some and, of us need that. And that really did happen. That was real. Um, and I'm going to piggyback off that scene because I have that written down. Mm-hmm. But my favorite part of the scene is David tricked all the motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he was there first, and you like, what? Wait a minute, David's yeah. here. Oh yeah. shit, maybe this might be different. And then that leads to <laughs> my next good scene: David at the drug house. Man, <laughs> David is inevitably, inevitably, excuse me, going to be himself. Mm-hmm. And when he tried to give that man them tickets, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Yo, this is for these are for Saturday." So he's like, "Nigga, it's Sunday." Well, I guess like, I ain't damn, gonna be there. I guess I ain't gonna be there. Then he had to eventually give up the Lincoln. Brand new Lincoln outside, man. Get more. Give me more. (laughs) Do you know what... So here's the thing with David showing up early and being the first one there. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of coaching. Like, I'm a... For those who don't know, I coach youth sports. And obviously, there's a youth. These these kids Mm -hmm. have to get there via their parents or one of us has to go pick them up as coaches, whatever the case may be. And it reminds me of that feeling when you walk into a game, a big game, and your best player ain't there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you, you, your best player is always iffy with the rise. Like, I don't know yeah. if he's going to be through time. He might show up middle of the first quarter. Whatever the case <laughs> may be. Just that feeling of knowing, like, David is probably the most important piece. Mm-hmm. And we have no idea. Like, we're, we're thrilled to see him. We're thrilled that he's here first. Yeah. But next week, he might not even show up. Like, that just probably. that fleeting feeling of up and down, like, you're so important, but yet you're so disappointing at the same time. It's rough. Yes. Important to the money and important to the figures. Yes. <laughs> we all need this right now. Yep, we all need it. On your I know he missed the first three shows of the reunion tour. <laughs> That's just David. Yeah. Yeah. And it just shows how, um, you know, regardless of everything David did, like he wasn't wrong. Like he had that flex. He mm-hmm. could do that. Like mm-hmm. I am that important. Goes back to what you said, Rachel. Him and Eddie having the kind. We the voices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, so at the end of the day, let's. I mean, Temptations. Yeah, they still they still around. They're still active as a group. Absolutely. But they ain't David Ruff and Eddie Kendrick's active. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna disagree with you a little bit. He could do that in '68. He could do that in '72. You okay. can do this in '89. That's fair, right? That's fair. He can't do this in '87, nigga. No, that's, get that's your fair. old ass up and get here. That's fair. Absolutely fair. I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. Um, I don't know who was it on. I don't know if we want to toss it to Ray or school, whatever. I don't really have anything else. Um, yeah, I didn't. The last one is just, just the Hall of Fame. They really made it in the Hall of Fame. Thing. That was just me showing yeah. love. Like I, that they, so when they when they were inducted to the Hall of Fame, by this time there were only four sets. Like mm-hmm. th- they were the fourth um round of introductions. So they made it very early in the Hall of Fame. So Shout out to the Temps, man. Okay. Legendary. And it's usually the original, and they let Dennis Edwards mm-hmm. um, be in that, be in the uh, Hall of Fame with them as well. Yeah. So, right. He was a big part. Yes. Um, absolutely. I have the, uh, do you have any more scenes? No. All right. So just something that you guys didn't mention a couple. I had the Hall of Fame as well, mainly because it's always good to see um, the group get back together. Mm-hmm. especially after years have passed and issues have you know come and gone mm-hmm. no matter what you do whenever you're a part of something that's a real thing and yes. it can be 10 years and you see that person and it's those memories come back up you accomplished mm-hmm. something together you made history yeah. together yes. yeah um, it's no different than any kind of like sports team or any kind of group or whatever the case may be like that's why those bonds are so close like you don't have to be best friends but mm-hmm. when you go through some shit together Mm-hmm. And you come out on the other side and you see them like, yo, man, we're good, bad, and different. That's my dog. Like, we had, we yeah. had some times. Yeah. So what it was, even if it ain't Otis that. And, David, mm-hmm. and they look at each other and David, I mean, Otis is kind of like, man, give me, like, gives him a hug. Like, man, yeah. it's good seeing you, bro. Like, because it really is. I might not be able to stand you for, like. Past this. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, we might only have, like, really 
a couple of days at a time where we can mesh yeah. mm-hmm. and then we back to button heads. But in those couple of days, I'm really happy to see you. Yeah. This, this draws back old memories, all that. So I love that Hall of Fame, um, especially as somebody who's been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yes. Mm-hmm. And seeing all that history is mm-hmm. really dope to see. Shout out to Cleveland. That's sure. Only shout out to <laughs> <laughs> you. Feel me? I'm like, sure. Yeah. Um, the performance where they meet Barry Gordy. Yeah. Oh, definitely. That. Yes. Just because I, mentioned it, I can imagine being that accessible yeah. to somebody like Barry Gordy in the early stages. Mm-hmm. And the fact that everybody quit. Like everybody quit after that because they weren't getting paid after uh um Johnny mm-hmm. pulled out all that money. He told them, Hey, this this gotta pay the bills, the royalties ain't coming, yeah. everybody get out. You know, the original group quits and it's just Melvin and she was fully stealing from them. Like, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Sure. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like Yes, it's frustrating, but just I'm always big on just keep going. Yeah, I say that all yeah, the time. Hard, baby. Yeah, I say that all the time. Just whatever you're doing, whatever dream you have, whatever goals you're chasing, just keep going. Yes, because the down, the bad times gonna come. That's it. What separates you with the people who keeps going, who don't like stop, who don't you know? Like Nip said, man, R.I.P. Nip, man, it's a marathon. R.I.P. Nip, it's a marathon, and I truly believe that. So I love the fact that Otis was like, "We are not quitting, bro." Mm-hmm. Melvin had that small inkling. Maybe it is, or we're not quitting. We have a card. Yep. That's it. You know what I'm saying? We don't got a group, but we got a card. Yeah. So we're going to figure out the group part and we can go from there. So I love that part. And mm-hmm. just the audition for Motown, mainly because when they pray before they go in there and Martha Reeves kind of gives that laugh, mm-hmm. I just think about how many times she's seen that. Like, yeah. This is your big break. You about to perform for Motown mm-hmm. to try to get a deal. Like how yeah. many people have come in there and they say the prayer, all the Hail Marys and everything else because... Yeah. It's a chance of a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And, it goes I mean? and it's not realistic in 2023. Like you're not going to you're not going to Rock Nation and rapping in front of Jay-Z. You're not going to Bad Boy and rap. Well, I don't know why you would, but <laughs> rapping in front of Puff or you know what I'm saying? Anything like that. It just doesn't happen like that. Right. So it's very interesting though, because you talk about accessibility. Um, and Detroit is big, but it's small too. And you think all of those artists or so many of them who were Detroit natives are interconnected in some way, yes. lived close by like Aretha. She wasn't on Motown, but she lived around the corner from Smokey growing up. And so many of them have that same story, you know, Diane Ross <laughs> and um, the primes, essentially Paul and Eddie, like, they dated and lived near each other. Like they all grew up together. And so Hitsville truly being like the hometown hero, like this is it. We at home. We ain't got to go too far. Perfect come up. So it's very interesting to see that. And to your point, you just will not see that to this day, even with the emergence of like local and homegrown situations. It's not that. Yeah. yeah, that's why we, we really got to do something. I don't know when I'm not making any promises, but just on that's just astonishing how many yeah. people were in that area. Yep. Yeah, um, it's insane. It's insane. So that's really all I have for scenes. I think we covered a lot of it. Like yeah. I said, this is biopics are different because this is real life. Like it's not like a fictional story. These are real things that happen for the right. most part. There's some, you know, fabrication. Absolutely. Um, but absolutely. I, I loved all those scenes. Did you guys what did you guys have down for best quotes? Rachel, we can start um, with you. I didn't have a lot. Good night, Mr. Williams. Uh, <laughs> Joe's mother, just because, girl, get the fuck on. Uh, <laughs> but I feel you. Uh, Johnny May, time is money. My money. My money. Uh, the Elgins, like the wristwatch. And then, ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. <laughs> yep. I got a, uh, ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Um, when Melvin got shot, was it Ruffin? Nah, <laughs> Ruffin would have killed me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Later on, when David Ruffin and Eddie are sitting and talking, and he said, uh, "I wasn't, I wasn't fired. I quit." Uh, um, David Ruffin, I'm the one selling the records. They coming to see me. Um, uh, you wish you could work it the way I do, but you can't because there's only one David Ruffin, and without him, the temps ain't nothing but a group in search of David Ruffin. Like that yeah. man was filling himself. You hear me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's mm-hmm. it. That's all I got. Yeah. A whole other level. Y'all mm-hmm. covered it for me. I don't have many quotes. I mean, we talked about the most famous one. Y'all got them all. Um, so we'll move on to scene stealer. I think there's only one person that we can pick for this. Mm-hmm. Leon is David Ruffin. Yeah. Absolute scene stealer. Like you yes. can't keep every scene with him. You have to stop and watch it. Yeah. Every single one. Um, things that bother you. 
Rachel, you got anything? I've already touched on it. Just um, Otis portraying himself as just the grand pooba, essentially, of the group. And then it just really kind of coming off of, ah, I can see niggas ain't really like you for real. That's all. All right. So with me, um, most of the 70s, they didn't do a lot about the 70s. Um, Dennis Edwards was kicked out the group three times and they let him back in. That shit bothers mm -hmm. the fuck out of me. They kicked my guy out, David, and just said, fuck him. Um, no. I didn't like that they made David the villain, but I get it. Um, and they didn't really show the real relationship of them and Barry Gordy, which was kind of shaky. And my last thing is, um, according to Otis Williams, by 1966, Motown was it, bro. Like he said, wherever you went, they didn't have to wait in line. There was just like, it was just, they didn't show that how big they really were. Like, like you said, in Detroit, that they, they was it, bro. Like wherever they went, I don't care where they went. They was, oh, that's David. Come on, bro. You in. Like, I would have liked to seen that a little bit more. It would have been dope to have like a good fellas come through the kitchen yes. kind of montage, yeah. like okay. clear out a clear out a table in front yeah. when the, the house is packed. Yeah. Um, because I I agree with you wholeheartedly. Like they did not and they tried and they told us how big they were, but they still didn't capture if you yeah. didn't know or weren't around in the era how big yeah. the temptations were and how important mm -hmm. they were, how famous they were. Yep. Um, which is hard for a band to do. Solo acts one thing, but to be yeah. to be Melvin and just be the get the same kind of notoriety as David. Like yeah. they were that big of a group as a yeah. unit. So mm -hmm. huge, huge. Like I said, first Motown act with the Grammy. Yep. I'm curious, school. You said that. They didn't show enough of the essentially tumultuous relationship between Barry and the Temps. What more did you want? Because I thought them saying, you know what, it ain't really feeling like family sort of no, gave you enough was, sauce because it's not really a Motown story. OK, well, I'll go into. So in 1976, the Temptations had to fight for their name because oh. in 1966, Motown snuck and copy wrote their name. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, um, Barry was doing some things now. Yeah. He, uh, talk he, to me. Listen, we're gonna do talk to me one day. The movie Talk to Me with Don Cheadle well, and, Chico, Chico, and, Ford, and Taraji. Mm -hmm. And there's this famous scene in that movie where Petey Green, played by Don Cheadle, has a rant about Don uh excuse me, Barry Gordy. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh -huh. yeah, you're right, Rachel. He was doing some stuff. He was doing some um, things. Another thing was um he wouldn't he wouldn't let them write songs like Barry was setting this shit up like my producers. These are my producers. These are my songwriters. This, unless he was Smokey and Norman Whitfield. But other than that, he he did not want his artist writing music because that involves publishing. Yeah, so that's funny. They, yes. They had to fight for publishing. And when they resigned in the 70s or maybe it was the early 80s, mm -hmm. um, Otis mentioned publishing and Barry laughed at them. And said, y'all ain't got no hits. What you want publishing for? And there, and Otis said, well, all right, then we ain't we good. We don't want to sign with you. And then he's like, all right, man, give him some publishing. Like mm -hmm. they had to, they had to fight with them boys. Um, another thing was like the money one right. It was a yeah. lot of money issues with the temptations in Motown. Not like, just them, everybody. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that's yeah. just you know, something they they should have. I guess because they're still signed, they didn't want to touch on it. I don't know, but um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. A new category, just only because it's a biopic. Mm -hmm. um, this is something we thought about after we did. Um, I was about to say, love don't cost a thing. What's <laughs> love got to do with it? Um, just uh, I, I called this section Capra Facts. Okay. You know, as the kids say, cat. <laughs> um, but just kind of pointing out differences between what we see in the film versus what happened in real life. So there's a few things I want to go through. So in the miniseries, during the 1964 New Year's Motown party, we see Al Bryant reluctant to perform an encore. He's fired from the group backstage. That did actually happen, but it happened in October 1963. Um, mm -hmm. And it was Williams who was reluctant to do the encore. Uh, so Paul Williams was the one that was like, eh, I ain't trying to do no encore. Mm -hmm. um, and then Brian would be fired two months later, two months le two months later for being uncooperative. And that was at a Christmas party. So right before New Year's. So it kind of played in line. Yeah. It was a little bit accurate, but it made sense for the film. Um, the four headed microphone, which is their trademark. We see it the first at the beginning of part two. We see it when Dennis is in the group. 
Um, mm-hmm. That actually came in 1966, and Ruff, Ruffin was responsible for creating it. Yep. So that, that was David Ruffin's thing, um, even though the movie doesn't give him credit for it. Um, it shows David Ruffin developing ego problems and suggesting to change the name to David Ruffin and Temptations in 1966. Um, in reality, that did not happen until late 1967, and he did it after the Supremes were rebranded as Diana Ross and the Supremes. So, yes, David is painted as the villain, but he only did that in real life because, hey, yeah. Diana Ross. And I know we had the whole conversation, and, you know, Rachel, you made your point. He's not being an original member. Mm-hmm. Um, but that gives him a little bit of saving grace, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, we see Dennis Edwards visibly angered when Ruffin steals his microphone during a concert performance. In real life, Edwards claims he gave the microphone to David Ruffin, <laughs> and he and he was appreciative of Ruffin's uh, uh, presence. Yeah. Whether that's true or not, that's up to y'all to debate. But mm-hmm. you know, he had to save face. I gave that mic to him. He ain't steal it. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Mm-hmm. So, the miniseries dramatically and somewhat accurately portrays Paul Williams' deaths by suicide, but in real life, he was found dead in an alley by a car and not a parking mm-hmm. lot. That portrayed. A lot of questionable activity with him and David Ruffin's death about what actually happened. Yeah. We'll never get those answers, but he also had sickle cell, mm-hmm. and that's why he started drinking. He yeah. had health issues, um, mm-hmm. and he also okay. So this man was living a double life. Basically, he was married with the five kids, but he had a very famous mistress named Winnie. I don't know her last name, but he was with her up until his death. Like. Hmm. He loved this Winnie lady and he wouldn't let her go. So mm-hmm. be like that. Um, not for me. <laughs> but it'd be like that. <laughs> In the miniseries, it was stated that the Temptations left Atlantic, Rec- Atlantic Records after one re- um one album. They actually recorded two albums, Here to mm-hmm. Tempt You in 1977 and Bear Back in 1978. Um, another inaccuracy, the depiction of Ruffin, Kendricks, and Edwards performing together before the 1982 tour. In reality, Ruffin and Kendrick did not perform. Did they, they didn't start performing together until 1985. Edwards joined them in 1989 after they were already inducted to the Hall of Fame. Hmm. Um, so that's just one thing that was different. Um, David Ruffin was not found dead um, near a hospital and then taken to a morgue where he had to be properly identified or they said he wasn't identified for a week. Um, in reality, he suffered a drug overdose and was taken to the hospital by a chauffeur who noticed, uh, who, excuse me, who notified attending staff of Ruffin's identity. Since no one claimed his body immediately after his death, his corpse lay in the morgue for two days. Mm. So Ruffin families and they were informed of his death and then identified him and claimed his body the next day. So it wasn't a week; it was really three days, I guess, as a whole. Uh, Melvin Franklin apparently dies out, outside of the kitchen in his mother's house. Mm-hmm. In reality, he died from heart failure um, after being admitted following a pair, of, excuse me, a series of seizures. And it was so fresh because he died in 1995 that. They kept. They didn't want to put what really happened. Yeah. Um. And that's why he died the way he did in the movie. But he. That I guess I could have had that in things that bother me. Like. Yeah. This go. This dude goes. He's perfectly fine. Perfect talking normal. And go get. The, go get the short ribs out of the oven and then. You just have go. a short rib. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that definitely bothered me. I don't know why they. I understand it. You know, given that it was so close and that's Otis's guy, and maybe he didn't want to relive that. We talked about his yeah. issues on set and how real that was yes. um but at the same time you can give us a little bit something better from Elvis. yeah and um one of the last things i guess got a couple other things the film depicts otis and melvin's connecting with the primes is occurring through the early blunder um attempts of melvin but in reality the connection took place to one well-time phone call that eddie kendrick's made to otis in 1960 the primes disbanded and they moved to California. Paul Williams and Eddie moved back to Alabama. They were no longer, you know, interested in music. Um, that same year, Eddie Kendricks visited family members in Detroit and gave Otis a call. Mm. Otis explained that he had got an audition with Motown, but they needed two more singers. And the rest, as they say, is history. Wow. Um, actually, Eddie agreed, and he was happy to agree, but he said, the only way I'm doing it is Paul's Paul. guy. I got to have Paul with me. So mm-hmm. if he's the second guy, then we there. And like I said, the rest, as they say, is history. Um, and that's when they formed the Elgins, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, like the, the wristwatch. <laughs> and we talked about the inaccuracies in this film just now. That led to a lot of lawsuits for Mr. Otis Williams. I'm mm-hmm. sure. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. He was he was sued by several people, several families for defamation of character, all mm-hmm. of that. Which is Mama Rose, everybody. Yeah, everybody was on Otis' ass. 
Um, and even though the movie's set mostly in Detroit, Los Angeles, they filmed it in Pittsburgh, similar to Jackson American Dream. A lot of that was set in Pittsburgh because of their architecture and mm-hmm. uh, just kind of the, the look of it, the geographical location. Um, very similar to Cincinnati. Like a lot of people come start are starting to film in Cincinnati now because we have a lot of like old school buildings and things like that. And our architecture is pretty dope. Um, so, yeah, that's a few things. I, th- I might have a couple more in trivia, but we'll get to them in a second. Rachel, were you about to say something? My bad. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, there was no really come see about me moment. So sorry, no. Ray. It's okay. This wasn't like that in the back in the day. I Cultural mean, moments, the whole movie. Yeah, follow yeah. Josephine Holmes singing. You said what? Otis and them did follow Josephine Holmes singing. Yeah, that yes. and that was on brand for nineteen fifty eight. <laughs> yeah. That was definitely on brand. Like man, like if I was if I was a singer, you know what I mean? What? I lose my powers for evil. <laughs> All the time, and that's why you ain't got them. Um... Exactly, yeah. I knew. I knew. We talk about white. I would have sang to the mama. Yeah. I'd have climbed through that window. Mama would have. <laughs> Good fucking night. <laughs> Any actress from The Wire? No. Uh, soundtrack. Come on now. Come on. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Temptations. Yeah. Say less. Wouldn't let that happen to me though. Anything? That's what I put. I want to say all. <laughs> All the wives and girlfriends that the temptation stole. But what Breezy say? When the rich nigga wants you. <laughs> Straight up. Well, then you would have let it happen to you. You wouldn't have had a choice. It's a, it's a, couple, <laughs> stories, a couple stories that Otis told that were just ridiculous, man. He had to change up his ways. He said he couldn't mess with married women no more. Some nigga tried to, man, listen. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah man, don't play with people. Hey, listen, mm-hmm. I, I talk about this all the time in rap. Mm-hmm. Um, just having a conversation with somebody like why I got why y'all gotta be sleeping with my girl every yeah. every song like I just I just crack your chick whatever the case is mm-hmm. stop messing with these people women man some dudes do not play about that girl yes as they shouldn't as they shouldn't like and they would really like cause harm like I'm not I'm not joking when I say that I'm being serious like that will get you in a world of trouble I'm seeing people do some crazy stuff over their girl straight up so be careful before you start dipping and climbing in yeah. you know somebody else's honey pot <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about it, man. Just be careful. Um, let's see. Wouldn't let that happen to me. I don't think I would have made it without whooping Flynn's ass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Flynn would have got thrown out of David Ruffin's apartment window. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just I'm sorry. I just, you know, more so than David. Like David, yeah, you might have got slapped around, but Flynn definitely would have got some hands. Like he would have got worked. Because who are you, bro? Because who are you in the way? Um, trivia. You got anything for trivia school? I got a lot. Um, I ain't gonna get into all of it. Um, <laughs> Temptations, nine Grammy nominations, four wins, um, 14 RB number ones, four Billboard number ones. Um, uh, my girl, I can't get next to you. Papa was a rolling stone and just my imagination. All written, except for my girl, was written and produced by Norman Whitfield. That's mm-hmm. why he was a cocky asshole. Um, they had a, a few su- superstitions. Um, one of them is they would warm up to singing the song Cindy. No whistling allowed. Um, they had to hold hands and Melvin uh, would say prayer. Um, I said David jumped on stage three times. When David left, it caused Eddie a lot of pain. And he began to kick it with uh, David a lot more, which led to mm-hmm. that friendship, which led to that other group and things yeah. like that. Um, they had the first major black TV special. Um, beef was heavy with the temps. Norman Whitfield, Norman Whitfield was um, producing them, and he did a lot of just wild shit to the point where um, writers started calling the Temptations the Norman Whitfield chord singers. To the point where Otis Williams said, "No one would say that to their face, but they definitely read it." And if, if anyone tried it, he'll whoop their ass. That's that's yeah, what he yeah. um, in 1974. A lot of a lot of uh, your music was based on radio jocks, and mm-hmm. they won an award from the American Music Award. Um, it was best vocal group, and they they were on, they were uh, out of town, so they couldn't come. Um, and the president of Motown during the time uh, thanked Dick Clark instead of <laughs> instead of radio jocks and they just released a song that was supposed to be it mm-hmm. the jocks killed it man so That's the 70s were horrible for the temptations thanks yeah. to the president of motown 
Um, around the 70s, they found about $300,000 missing in royalties. Uh, when you joined the group, there was a year and a half probation period. Mm. That is when, and I'm talking about from Dennis Edwards on, um, that is where a lot of the trouble came. After that year and a half, mm -hmm. it started acting up. Um, one of those guys is Glenn Leonard. He was in the group for about a month because he missang uh, Just My Imagination. It was his first show live and uh, reporters start saying that they got a new temptation and he don't know the words, so they had to kick him out of the group. Um, there was another group member, Glenn Davis, I believe is his name, and he uh he went to the Apollo and they were singing and you know how they had a breakdown where you know they doing their thing and they let him take the mic and sing. He started thanking the audience. Yo, the Temptations would like to thank y'all for all these nice clothes we get to buy, all these fancy cars, all this, all that. He was out the group, bro. He was done. Like, bro, okay. nobody wants to hear that. We don't want to hear that. We know we buying the album. Yeah. So, like I said, I can go on and on, man. But uh, that's 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 what I found uh, quite interesting. Okay. Um, couple other things, and then we'll get wrapped up on this episode. I mentioned Paul Williams' death being ruled a suicide, and how the film showed it in the parking lot, but it was really an alley. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a cru I'm a true crime junkie. I'm, I just love the psychology behind it. It's mm -hmm. fascinating and terrifying at the same time. Um, but for a couple things, the reason they think it was foul play is Paul was found laying next to his car in an alley. Um, his his body was positioned as if he had been standing. So they were like, why would you get out the car just to shoot yourself? Right. Instead, you know what I mean? It didn't make mm -hmm. sense to investigators. He was also right handed, but he had shot, been shot on the left side of his head. Mm -hmm. So if it's a suicide, it's hard to take. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. wouldn't use your non dominant hand to do it. Um, and forensics proved that the gun that was used to kill Williams was fired twice. Mm. But Williams only sustained one wound and that was to the head. And finally, a bottle of liquor was found near Williams' left side position as if he had dropped the bottle when he got shot. So mm -hmm. it's on your left side, but you're supposed to shoot yourself shoot with yourself. the left side. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's never really been solved, but a lot of funny stuff behind Paul Williams' death. Yes. Um, Eddie, he he quit the group in the, um, in the movie um, because Paul wasn't well enough to return. In reality, he had left the group before Paul was even stepping down and recorded mm -hmm. two singles without them. Um, Jimmy Ruff and Rachel, I know you mentioned that he was supposed to be the one or the school. I forget which one said it, but he was supposed to be the one that joined the group. However, he couldn't dance. And that's really the reason he didn't join the group. He just could not mm -hmm. dance. So if he could, we might not have had David Ruffin. Yeah. Um, let's see. I just want to shout out Lewis Price. He was a former member of the Temptations who sang with them in the 70s. He's the one that did David Ruffin's parts for the movie. As far as singing, okay. um, a lot of the cast did their own singing, except for Leon. He he did he let uh, Lewis Price do it, and the only time you hear Leon singing is in the apartment. And he said, I, I refuse, refuse to let you go. Yeah. Um, when David Ruffin joined the Temptations, he was already a solo recording artist. School, you mentioned that earlier. Um, he had a different contract than the rest of the group, so a lot of that led to that you know dysfunction and that ah, what you got going on, <laughs> um, the hesitation that was going on with Eddie Kendricks. And let's see. I think that might be about it. Oh, one thing is not in the film. Um, Ruffin demanding an accounting of the group's money. He felt Motown was cheating the group and was and the fear was shared by Eddie Kendricks, who claims that this was the reason why he considered leaving the group in Motown as early as 1965, mm. which was six years before he really left. So a lot of shady business practices. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is what it is. Um, you know, we 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 wish that it didn't go that way, but that's just how it was in the yeah. 60s, 70s, all that. When yeah. you're building an empire, I think Inside Man, the movie, Spike Lee's movie, Inside Man with Denzel Washington, um, behind every great fortune is a great crime. Yes. Okay. I didn't know where you was going with that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah anybody who got some money in this country, they got the dirt, they got their hands dirty as well. Oh, shady. You can mm -hmm. definitely believe that. And Barry Gordy's still with us. So, so I have uh... 93 years old. I have uh, something. Who's who's your favorite temp? Who's your guy? Come on, man. Okay. Who who's your guy? I guess it would be David or Eddie. Okay. So, what's your favorite song? Um, I don't know. It's not my girl. It's not just my imagination. Um, maybe um. But it feels like rain. Oh, how I wish that it would rain. 
um I don't know, maybe that. You know the, you know the story behind that song? No. Okay, so the young man that wrote that song was he was young, 21, 22. His uh he wrote three songs and one of them happened to be I Wish It Would Rain. Mm -hmm. And these three songs were all sad because his girl was cheating on him. Oh. Um and long story short, he wound up killing himself. After I Wish It Would Rain, he, you know, basically gave it to the temptations. They recorded it. And a little while later, he wound up killing himself because his girl was cheating on him. Damn, school shit got dark. I'm just saying, man. Behind that's a great song, but okay. Well, I'm gonna go to "You're My Everything." Just <laughs> right. And I really, really do love that song, and it really might be one of my favorites. Um, I would have to look at the anthology list because it's really just too many to name. But "You're My Everything" is fresh, so yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, shit. It was gonna take some time. What you? What's the, right. What you got? I got a whole list, but no, no, no. I, I mean, like, what's your tribute? Oh, so I would probably say uh, my favorite song would be Since I Lost My Baby. Um, for all the listeners, do me a solid and you too as well. Um, look up the Temptations live album um, and look into the song Yesterday um, by the Temptations uh, with David as lead. His rendition of Yesterday is, bro, it's phenomenal, bro. Like, you you see why this man is who he is. Like, this is a live album. Every, the whole album is fire, but just, just listen to that song, and I promise you, you're going to be convinced. Like, I, I, this guy was it, um, for sure. That's my guy. Yeah, man. It's, um, it's a Beatles song, by the way, so mm -hmm. you can only imagine how... Never mind. Go ahead. Um, Not a Beatles fan. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, and I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I have to get back. Maybe I'll answer next week or something like that. Um, a love I can feel is a. I love that song. Yes, that's a good. I one. love that song. That's I don't know if it's call. my. I don't know if it's my favorite, but I really do like mm -hmm. that song a lot. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We can spend. I don't want to spend too much other t more time trying to pick my favorite Temptation song because that might take a while. But, um, I think that's pretty much it. Also, shout out to Lamont Dozier. Yeah. No, I'm not. No. Okay. Yeah, shout out to Lamont Dozier. They mentioned him early, um, but if you don't know who he is, Google him. Legend. Yeah, absolute legend. We won't get into it. It's not a Lamont Dozier episode, but um, they mentioned him at the beginning of this film for a reason. You know? mm -hmm. So, as we conclude these episodes, too high, too low, just right. Ray P, the average viewer, feels Temptations miniseries is an 8.4 out of 10. Too high, too low, just right. I don't know what it's a point for. Um, I go 8.5, so too low. Okay. I'm going to say it's too low. I got it nine. That's a nine. Okay. I'm going to rate P 8.5. You know what I mean? It's just right, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. I think it's just right. Um, and I want to just say one more time how this came out in 1998. And it's hard for stuff like this to hold up. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's just I just want to credit how well done this was made, mm -hmm. um, how you can still watch it in 2023. And I'm sure years and years and years after this, mm -hmm. and you will still have the same effect and really know everything you need to know. Um, it didn't get everything like school mentioned, but it definitely got a lot. You got the feel of the temptations. You got the feel yeah. of that era. And we appreciate it for that. And we just want to make sure we give it some flowers. Classic. Um, I don't know how old um, Mike is who requested this. Um, but he strikes me as somebody who's younger than all of us. Yeah. So I do appreciate the fact that if he is, I don't know, man. Mike could be 42 hey, for all we know. Shout out to Mike, man. <laughs> Mike could be 42 for all we know. But the fact that he requested this, uh, like I said, from his IG page, it, he does look a little younger. Um, I don't know who raised him, but obviously he got some good soul in That's him. That's right. And we appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate being able to talk about something like this. And we're looking forward to more biopics in the future. But with that being said, Ray, you got any last comments? Um, I don't. Long live real music. That's right. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Man, I'm I'm a diehard fan of the temptation. So this means the world to me is good to be back. I missed you two guys holding it down. Um, shout out to B. I know he was on here holding it down. I love y'all so much. Everybody, the listeners, just I love y'all straight up. So that's what I got for you. No doubt. So 
With that being said, do not forget, we got y'all television feed. Still have two more episodes of your honor. Our next episode will be dropping next Monday. Mm -hmm. um, actually, it might drop a little earlier because we got a little scheduling difference this week. So it might drop a little earlier than Monday. So be on the lookout for that. The last two episodes completely of the series because they're not having a season three. So tune in. Uh, we do have another television series that's starting at the end of March. Actually, I think we're going to record early April. <laughs> Um, that's going to be Succession. If you don't watch Succession, you can start watching now. We will be covering the final season of that. I mentioned we'll put the Martin uh, Best Episode Ever up on the We Got Y'all feed as well. And we'll continue with television throughout the year. As always, you'll catch us every Thursday here on this feed, the Culture Garden Podcast. Request month will continue. Got a couple more to do to get uh, to get through March. But we appreciate y'all. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, these biopics, there's so much information, especially since there are people who really walked and talked this earth. Yeah. We want to make sure we did it, gave it the proper time. That's why we're at an hour and a half. Um, but we appreciate y'all for tuning in. It's the temptations. You can't go wrong. So with that being said, y'all be cool. How y'all be cool? Peace. Bye. And that's a wrap. <laughs>